Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome into another Keep Boone Healthy Facebook channel video extravaganza. I'm David Jackson, President and CEO of the Boone Area Chamber of Commerce. We are joined by our good friend, Director of Public Health for App Healthcare, Jennifer Green. It's about that time, once again, for us to check in and an appropriate day to do so with new guidance coming out of Governor Roy Cooper's office today as it relates to a lot of, I'll call it, ho holiday operational stuff for you and your family and how you may be moving around uh, here over these next couple of weeks. So, Jen, first of all, thanks for, for being back with us again. I know a lot of folks excited to see uh, some of the trends here locally, at least in the the uh, case numbers uh, staying down here for for quite some time. Uh, give us uh, kind of a sense of of your take on that and, and what maybe has attributed to those numbers remaining low here for a few weeks. Well, I I'm pleased to like everyone else, David, and thanks for having me back. By the way, um, appreciate you um, inviting me. And we are. Um, very encouraged um, with the numbers, but I want to just urge some caution. Um, uh, certainly know that the numbers can turn the wrong direction pretty quickly. And, um, you know, it's really important that we remain vigilant. And I would say uh, thanks to all of our folks locally who have been wearing their mask, who have been using social distancing and trying to make sure they're washing their hands frequently and uh, getting others that they uh, care about to do the same. I think that makes a difference. We know that we've got some testing opportunities that have been um, offered across the community and we've seen that uh, be another resource uh, to have early identification of cases which helps us prevent spread. Um, but you know it's it's encouraging but it's not something we really want to, um, uh, we're not out of the woods yet I guess I should say. Well, and, and I know that we've talked uh, from a local resource standpoint at, at various times over the last several months about hospital capacity and, and that being one of the lagging indicators going into, but probably also coming out of some of the, the, the spikes that we've seen in time. Uh, what do you see in terms of hospital capacity right now in, in this general area? And is there still any carryover effect from the, the spike in numbers that we saw back toward the beginning of October? Well, we certainly see um, there is uh, a number of uh, folks who have had to seek hospital level care. And just because our cases aren't continuing to climb at the same rate does not mean that our hospital isn't experiencing um, additional uh, uh, folks coming in for COVID or other related needs. I mean, part of what we have to remember is that the hospital has to care for us for a lot of different things. And what we want is for them to continue to have the capacity that they need um, not only to help uh, our community with COVID related illness, but also uh, other illnesses that we need hospital care for. And I think we have seen that number be um, higher over the last few months, um, really the last uh, six weeks or so, it's been higher. So just because our cases, uh, our trend is looking better, it doesn't mean that we don't have to keep a careful watch on that metric too. Jen, I know there's been a lot of discussion in the media here over the last few days uh, about the uh, the V word, that being vaccine, and and understanding that there are some things that are in process now that that may, um, you know, be shining some some light toward the end of the tunnel a little bit on on some of this. Can you give us any of, of your professional thoughts about what a realistic timeline looks like and and what a realistic distribution plan looks like for for North Carolina right now, so people can begin to think a little bit about the process and and, and how long it may take for some of those uh, vaccines and, and uh, different uh, care methods uh, to, to reach our area? Well, I, I can tell you locally, we've um, submitted our um, vaccine enrollment um, uh, paperwork as a, a provider in the public health system. And I know that um, that's part of uh, the process. Um, there is a uh, plan that's uh, listed on the Department of Health and Human Services website if you're interested and in going to read it. Um, it's a draft plan, um, as most plans have to be as we're evolving. Um, but it goes into a little bit more about uh, the approach uh, moving forward and um, prioritizing how the vaccine is distributed. So I can say, you know, a couple of things to take away. I don't think we're going to have broad availability anytime soon, but I do uh, have, you know, um, I'm encouraged to see uh, and hear some of the positive things that are coming out um, about some of the trials. I feel um, encouraged also that there is a statewide panel of folks who are really looking at this, not only from a, a clinical perspective and what's going to be effective and safe, but also from a distribution 
perspective and what's going to be best for public health and how do we make sure that the vaccine is distributed to people in need, um, people who are at higher risk for complications, but also uh, folks who are working in the front lines. Um, and I think that's where we're going to probably see uh, more of the focus initially. Well, important information there and, and delineation between those groups. And I know as, as we get more information, we'll certainly talk about it more, I'm sure, in our future chats. Um, kind of switching gears a little bit to the news of today, uh, Governor Roy Cooper making some amendments to phase three, uh, the most notable being uh, dropping that indoor mass gathering um, a number from 25 back down to 10 and really focusing a lot of today's conversation around those um, intimate gatherings or family gatherings that we might see coming up uh, for the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, can you give us a little bit more of that um, refresher on what it is about those smaller gatherings that, that can become so problematic when we're dealing with, with the spread of, of the virus that we're seeing at this stage of, of uh, where we are? Sure. I, I think one of the things that we um, see happening are people are sort of letting their guard down a little bit. And um, we all want to hang out with people we know and we want to spend time together and, um, you know, really want to encourage folks when it's nice weather out. Um, and right now we've had some really beautiful weather. Um, being outdoors is always safer um, and it's not a replacement to uh, wear a mask. Uh, you know, remembering to, to wear a mask is, is critical. And what we see happening in some of our cases locally are gatherings that are uh, all good intentions and people having a good time. And then later on, we learned that uh, folks have actually been infectious and um, it's led to more people um, catching uh, COVID-19. Um, you know, if you're going to be in a gathering, you know, think about how you're feeling. Make sure that you're not uh, feeling unwell, that you are uh, attending and you're healthy. Um, also, you know, it's always safest to be with the people in your household. The people that you're with all the time um, is always a safer bet. But if you are choosing to do um, another gathering, you know, keeping it to uh, 10, 10 people indoors, um, making sure that you're outdoors as much as you can. Um, but if you're inside, uh, keep that social distance, wear your mask, make sure you're healthy and, um, and try to, um, you know, Think about other ways. Um, you know, it's probably not the time to set up the buffet where everyone's handling things. Uh, it's a time to maybe um, serve people if you're going to have food and drinks um, at your um, event. I think that's one way. Um, I also think uh, limiting your exposure before you go to an event um, is important. So thinking about the uh, two weeks in advance, and right now we're looking at um, Thanksgiving right around the corner. Uh, how can we try to limit our exposures uh, as individuals before we go um, attend a, a Thanksgiving dinner? I think those are really important uh, ways that we can protect our loved ones. You know, and, and that's been an interesting shift in the conversation around this particular set of holidays coming up uh, back at, at other points in time in the summer where travel wasn't as big of a thing. Uh, you didn't see that that guidance that was out there today about, hey, start thinking proactively about that trip that you may need to take and, and spacing out 14 days to quarantine yourself and all of that that uh, that type of stuff too. Another thing that came in that, that same vein today was about pre-event testing. Um, and, and maybe if you are, again, going to um, go to a gathering to make sure that you've got a clean COVID test ahead of time, what is a good timeline to attach to that kind of activity? Uh, not getting yourself tested too early, but also probably not getting yourself tested too late right before those events too. Well, I think um, the key would be um, looking at, you know, closer to the event, again, trying to limit your exposures in advance. Uh, but then uh, maybe thinking about, you know, uh, three to five days out, um, getting tested. And certainly uh, the people who are attending your gathering, uh, they should also be aware of their own risk, uh, not just risk of exposure, but risk of complications. If they have other health conditions, it may be safest for them to be at home. So um, that's important to keep in mind. Uh, there are a lot of testing options here in the community. And I would say we uh, certainly uh, support uh, you getting tested before you go to your event. And uh, uh, certainly you could come uh, earlier than that, but you should also get tested again a little bit later. So um, hopefully that will help folks have a little clearer picture of, of that. One of the things that, that I know we've talked about a lot in these chats over the last few months is testing capacity. Is there anything new to, to share on that locally about what is able to be done here in the high country, especially now as we'll see, you know, student population leaving here pretty soon, maybe some people coming back to the area. What is available that might not have been there before? 
Well, I think we've seen our providers continue to offer uh, uh, testing and uh, we certainly are continuing to offering uh, testing at, at healthcare. And we have uh, continued to see uh, folks be able to uh, get different methods of testing. You know, we've got some providers locally who are offering rapid testing. That's a really good tool for people who are sick and uh, can certainly help us um, have early identification of cases. So uh, that can be a helpful tool. And it's one we've added in uh, here at App Healthcare uh, for people who um, have symptoms, we can uh, certainly provide a rapid test. And um, so I think our capacity is good. One of the things we're working on, David, is to add some uh, additional staff uh, for uh, mobile testing. It's been a real need uh, for us locally here to have our team actually going, uh, not just uh, operating here at the health department, but being able to go on site to businesses or other locations um, to make sure that um, folks get access to testing. And so we've, uh, we've continued to do that and we'll, we'll be planning for that in the spring. Uh, another one of the, the kind of time sensitive things is we we look forward a couple of weeks and thinking about holiday shopping. And we've talked a lot about what those windows look like, even just from a, a manufacturing of goods standpoint. But certainly as people get back into that routine and, and start to move around, uh, probably a, another good idea to remember some of those um, uh, tried and true things that were done back in the spring, early summer about uh, limiting exposure in and out of, of business settings. Um, some guidance released by Dr. Cohen today about that. Uh, what are some of the high points on, on that from your perspective? Uh, I think the biggest thing is remember the basics, you know, wear the, get behind the mask as, as, as she has said. And I think um, that's critical. Um, also, I would say, you know, if you're a local business, think about how you can serve people who uh, might be at higher risk. And if you're in a high risk group, think about going in an off time. Uh, maybe it's not the peak time of day, um, spend some time thinking about when you could come at earlier hours or later hours or perhaps in a time that's a lower, slower time um, that would limit your exposure to others. Also, you know, be aware when you're going to a, a business or a location, uh, try to think about what you're looking for in a healthy place. And, and I think our local businesses have done a really good job of trying to demonstrate that. And that, um, uh, that certainly helps us all feel safer when we're walking in. I know that uh, because we don't need anything else to stack on top of this, but but we have heard, um, you know, countless reminders about flu shots. The last time we talked, we were really kind of at the onset of that period of, of availability of, of the flu vaccine here in, in the area. Um, where does that stand, number one, in terms of access? And, and um, you know, again, from your health provider's perspective, uh, the importance level of, of people uh, making sure that they're vigilant with with getting flu shots this year. Where does that rank on your priority list? I'd, I'd say um, a flu shot should be at the top of everyone's list. It is one of the most important things and we say it every year, but this year in particular, it's one of the most important things you can do for yourself and your loved ones. Uh, don't forget your children um, and need that as well as uh, maybe older adults in uh, your family. Uh, those uh, folks are at higher risk for severe complications from the flu and with COVID and flu circulating, um, already, we know that it's going to be incredibly important that we vaccinate um, our, ourselves against the flu. So um, it is available. Um, talk to your healthcare provider. I uh, certainly encourage you to have a conversation. I know a lot of providers are offering it with a, a wellness visit that maybe you've put off um, and you should do. Um, so that's a good way to do it. Um, another way is just uh, talk to a local pharmacy um, or you can call the health department. We certainly offer it um, too. Jane, I know you're going to be joining us for our uh, Vision Northwest North Carolina event next week, and we're going to talk some about that that um, a workplace wellness care and, and preventative care that employers can can talk to employees about. But you just kind of mentioned it, and the, the last thing I want to kind of leave us with here today, um, in thinking about the end of the year coming up here pretty soon, I know that there are a number of people that use that period of time to rush to get into the doctor one more time to, to maybe take advantage of that health care benefit uh, while they've got the opportunity to do so. Um, it, the, the landscape of things that can be provided right now ver, uh, through telehealth, through uh, medical practices that are taking those extra steps, uh, it, it seems, again, from the consumer side, like more is available in a safer environment than perhaps ever before. So that shouldn't necessarily be the thing that keeps people going or, or from going to get mm -hmm. those routine checkups while they've got the opportunity. Would you say that's fair? Yes, I would say that's really fair. And I, I would say too, it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to have a conversation with your provider. If you, um, if you have questions or concerns about it, 
they can walk you through it. And I think we've seen local providers really step up and um, put into place uh, these telehealth practices that are incredibly uh, useful for having that um, face-to-face interaction with your provider in a secure way um, and could limit your uh, time. So maybe you just come in for your flu shot instead of coming in for your um, whole extended visit um, unless you need something else. Excellent information. Well, we really appreciate, again, the the work of you and your entire team. Uh, I know in some cases, it feels like we've been talking about this for years. Uh, In some cases, it feels like we've been talking about this for a few minutes, but uh, we we really appreciate uh, the uh, the continued uh, information that you're able to provide and the hard work of your staff. And and I hope that uh, as as we get toward the holidays, there can be some time carved out for for everybody to catch their breath for a second. And uh, uh, truly, uh, uh, thank you for everything that you all are doing. Thanks, David.